All right, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us for part six of our six part webinar series. So uh, we are super excited. Uh, thank you again, once again, to Nicolette College for allowing us to come together for this recording uh, and, um, you know, and for this, this great uh, series of, of subject matter for entrepreneurs to be able to improve, to think about their business ideas. Um, if you're looking to start a business, you're looking to grow or scale your business, uh, this has been fantastic. So the library of these videos and what we've done this spring is going to be available 110%. Uh, so uh, look out for those emails if you signed up. Uh, feel free to look out for the email that will provide the video library uh, after we have uh, concluded this last uh, session together uh, and uh, and for future opportunities for, uh, for, for workshops and webinars that we'll be uh, promoting out uh, into the world. So, uh, but without further ado, I want to uh, just uh, remind everyone, my name is Kenny Turner. I am with the Network for Teaching Entrepreneurship. And we have come together with Nicolette College to provide these webinars together uh, for folks who can join all over the country. We've had folks from all over the country join these webinars, hop on in uh, and have a great time with us. So, um, but without further ado, I'm excited about our guest today. Uh, and let me do a quick introduction of our guest. She is absolutely uh, amazing and very impressive in the work that she's done and all the beautiful promotions that you guys have seen uh, was done by our guest today. So it's fitting that she closes us out uh, to give us some tips on uh, on social media. So, uh, but let me introduce her officially. Uh, Jessica Ravellis is a seasoned writer and copy editor and an award-winning storyteller. She brings over 15 years of marketing and communications experience, including content development, SEO and publishing. Jessica has worked with major global brands, including the Magic Johnson Foundation, Fab New York, Joe's Jeans, Outfest, uh, Los Angeles Gay and Lesbian Chamber of Commerce, et cetera, et cetera. There's so much there. So, uh, but without further ado, I'm gonna let her uh, uh, do the formal introduction herself, get to know her and her business. And uh, she has some great tips for you today. So. Uh, Jessica, I hand it over to you and thank you for joining us today. We appreciate you. Thank you, Kenny. I appreciate you so much. I'm excited to be here. Let me share my screen. Okay, so we've got five ways to repurpose your content for social media as our topic today. There's actually many more ways you can repurpose social media content. Um, these are just five easy ones that you can do right away, implement into your, um, into your business, into your personal brand, whatever that might look like. So um, Kenny already gave the, um, my, my lovely introduction, so thank you for that. These are some of the companies we worked with that he mentioned. Um, so I have a full service digital marketing and communications agency, and we work with uh, women, LGBTQ and BIPOC audiences and um, help elevate the, the messages from those communities out into the world through social media, um, blogs, websites, SEO and copywriting. These are just some of the um, services that we offer. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is give you a little bit of education on the kind of the state of um, the customer journey and and also how people come to learn about your brand and your whether it's a personal brand or your actual business um, through social media. So HubSpot is a great resource and maybe um, Kenny, you can pop HubSpot.com into the chat for people because they have a lot of free um, articles, templates, like anything that you can imagine in marketing they've written about. Um, they also have a, C <clears throat> a CRM, um, which is a customer relationship management tool. Um, they have a free one and then they have a paid one, but HubSpot is just a great resource for, um, like if you had a question on customer personas that we're gonna talk about today or, um, even sales scripts, uh, marketing plan templates, um, any kind of content you can think of related to like SEO, uh, social media, different platforms and how to use them. So um, that's HubSpot. And according to, so they're an authority in the space. According to HubSpot, it takes about eight touch points to reach your message with, with varying messages to reach your audience. And it's actually, you know, 
there's different statistics out there. So it's between eight to 14 touch points, which is a lot when you think about um, the content that you're producing or you know that you feel maybe pressured to produce because social media is so prevalent and um, you know now really ingrained in, in our in our in our social system. Um, and Gen Z folks are, you know, have grown up now with social media. So um, it's very pervasive, it's not going away. And so what we want to do is leverage social media to make an impact and get our message out there. Um, when I say varying messages, I mean like different different types of platforms where you would put your message out. So it could be social media, that's a channel, that's a marketing channel. It could be through PR efforts, that's a marketing channel. It could be through a blog, marketing channel. It could be through your website, your advertising, that's a marketing channel as well. So um, we're gonna talk about some of those things and how to get your message out using those different methods. Um, but early on in the stage, of the stages of your customer journey early on, customers are gathering information and they're building an awareness of your products and services. So it's really important to continue to like hit them with message with this with the messaging over and over again. Um, not the same content every time, obviously, but with uh, your vision, mission, values um, it woven into your messaging um, for uh, for different posts and topics that you're going to choose. So you can increase and vary the different touch points like I talked about just a moment ago through social. So these are all channels mark called marketing channels. And under each channel, there's platforms. So social media, some of the platforms are Facebook, Instagram, WhatsApp, TikTok, LinkedIn, Twitter. There's Pinterest, there's um, Be Real is a new one, Circle's another one. Um, advertising we talked about, Google Ads and Yelp is something I didn't mention, um, but that's a channel as well. Email marketing, where you can um, get your customers the information that they need about your products and services and also nurture those relationships. Um, text campaigns, which are SMS, um, which are promotional, and you can also have nurture sequences through text. Um, influencer marketing is another channel um, where you can do in, uh, partnerships with other influencers and have them take over your Instagram, whether it's a business or a personal brand, or co cross collaborate on a project and do contests and things like that. And then public relations, which is, you know, it can be anything from digital to um, uh, TV, radio, podcasts, uh, and print. So why content marketing? So content marketing is, um, it's, it's a combination of the written and the visual elements that you're, um, that you're creating your messaging around. So content can be a blog, it can be social media posts, it can be um, a white paper or ebook, um, it could be videos, or um, so like uh, TikTok videos, YouTube videos, um, and it could be anything visual or audio visual, something that communicates a message that's content. And so content marketing is the promotion of that um, across you know, the online landscape. So according to Pew Research Center, which is a very well-respected um, and uh, authoritative source on lots of different statistics, um, I go there for statistics on um, like uh, populations, different size populations and how they behave online, how they behave watching television, how they behave, you know, they have some labor statistics as well, but you can also go to the, um, to the US Bureau of Labor Statistics to look at those things too. So um, I went to Pew Research Center and found that 81% of US adults all across the country go online daily from once a day to almost constantly. And almost constantly can be literally minute by minute. Um, so worldwide, Statista, which is another, um, another uh, like credible source, um, says that global, the global digital publication is just over 4 billion, which includes 3.7 billion mobile internet users. And there's over 3 billion social media users. So here's what the data tells us. Um, Content Marketing Institute, that's another great one. Kenny, you can pop in the chat. I think it's just contentmarketinginstitute.com. 
Um, 91% of B2B business to business marketers use content marketing to reach their customers and 86% of B2C business to consumer marketers believe that content marketing is a key strategy and that's only in, continued to increase over the years. So that was data from 2018. It takes a little while to, for data to catch up. Um, so, and I can find even more current resources as well, but um, CMI says that content is one of the most effective ways to promote your business and 50% um, or more of marketers use content to reach their, their audience every day. So the biggest content marketing challenges your co uh, companies typically face is they find it either one challenging to produce engaging content, 65%. Um, of business owners. And then 62% of business owners say they don't know how to measure the return on investment of their content campaigns. That's a problem. So <laughs> we need to know, you know, first of all, how to create the content, what to deliver, but then how to measure its success, because that's going to help guide our decision making on what future content to produce. And then 60% say that they can't produce content consistently, that it's a problem. So um, that's why I created this, uh, this session, this uh, presentation to give you some ideas of spark your uh, creativity on how to create that consistent content that is engaging. Um, so this is just a, a very um, simple um, visualization that shows you the B2B marketers who have a content marketing strategy in place already. So I would say, you know, like 38%, I would say is like a majority here um, say that they have one, but it's documented uh, or not documented, I'm sorry. And then 37% almost tied, um, it is documented. And then you have 19% um, uh, plan to have one within the year, which we're already halfway through the year. so. Um, you know, time is ticking with that. And then 6% have no plans to create a content marketing plan, um, which, it, and it's, again, it goes back to these numbers of percentages of, you know, more than half the half of business owners are having these issues that we just talked about. So um, also what the data tells us is that 72% of marketers say that content marketing increases engagement. So even though 60% of business owners are saying we're having trouble creating content consistently and making it engaging. It's actually, you know, way over half per, uh, 50%, 72% um, of content marketing is increasing engagement and engagement looks like clicks, likes, shares, saves, and comments. Um, and so, and, and that same number also says it's increased the number of leads. Uh, so Twitter actually shows an extraordinary return on investment for their platform. And this was um, like right before Elon Musk took over Twitter. So this is a little bit dated in that respect for the last year. Um, but 66% of people reported that consumers reported that they had found a new business on Twitter. 69% of people bought something because of a tweet. And you could think of that as any social media platform, any kind of post. People are are uh, influenced by what they're seeing online. And then 94%, almost 100% almost of people plan to make a purchase from a business that they actually follow. So it's important um, not only to create messaging, but to get it out consistently and continue to engage and um, interact with your customers and nurture those customers. Because if you think about it, if I was in the, if I was in the market for, let's say, um, a you know, yoga, uh, clothing um, or workout clothing. Am I going to buy from, um, you know, maybe a more expensive big box retailer like uh, Lululemon, for example? Um, yes, we know their brand and uh, people are really comfortable and, ha and happy with that brand. But at the same time, there's a real shift in, in our um, social commerce where we're starting to see um, small businesses, people shop small and small businesses really start to um, take over that landscape of like uh, being able to have that high touch with their customers where they're able to interact better than some of these big brands. So, um, so then if I'm looking for this yoga clothing or workout clothing, for example, um, I might also consider not just Lululemon, just you know popping into the store, going online, 
Um, I might consider uh, Allo, ALO, or um, other brands that are savvy is another one. Um, these are small businesses, small to mid-sized businesses that um, that offer the same products at the you know same great value and same um, same uh, quality, but they have that that they have a closer interaction with their customers um, because those people those those businesses are putting out this content. That's that's if you're putting out the content. Um, so people, if they follow you most likely they're going to make a purchase from you versus a brand that they don't follow or even up some of the big box retailers. So SEO and content marketing, that brings us to search engine optimization, which um, definitely affects your content marketing. It's a big piece of content marketing. And what we do at our agency um, with SEO is, is it's the practice of um, increasing the, uh, the, like optimizing and increasing the number of page views that come from either search engines like Google, Yahoo, um, Bing, Pinterest, and YouTube are also thought of now as search engines. So because of you know how ubiquitous they are and you can search all these different pieces of content or topics. So SEO is just the practice of using keywords to support um, and bring that content up to the top of Google so that you land on the first page of the search engine results page, which is called a SERP, um, instead of on page four or page 100, because nobody we know goes to Google um, to the fourth page or even to the second page most, most of the time. There's a joke that I saw recently that said, um, it was from Content Marketing Institute, actually their Instagram, I follow them. And it said, um, where's the best place to, to hide? Uh, content marketer says, where's the best place to hide, to hide a dead body? And then it, you flip through and it says like the fourth page of Google or something like that. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that kind of gives you an idea of, of where you are uh, with your SEO, where you want to be. Um, and that's really on that first page for your keywords and the terms that are relevant to your business. So um, search engine optimization affects where your content appears. So where it is on the page, on the first page of Google and whether people will see it and click through to the site. So 95% of people only look at the first page um, and, and then the other 5% maybe will go into like the second page, maybe the third page, but usually it's really just the first or second page. Um, and then content marker, marketers are focusing on engagement and conversions um, as well as website traffic, but you need the website traffic for people to see your content. So, um, so with SEO, that, that's a whole other presentation that I have on SEO. So if you're interested in learning more about SEO and how it can help your business and impact your bottom line, definitely um, reach out to me or put your information in the chat. I actually just sent out um, our company newsletter and it has some information about SEO in there. So um, it's, it's a great way to organically input keywords into your content, like um, for, the, for the apparel, for example, um, two examples of keywords would be like yoga outfit. That's, that's what I would call a, um, a short tail keyword. It's just, it's short, sweet to the point, but it's broad. You also need to have long tail keywords and long tail keywords. I'm, I'm going off on a little tangent for a reason, but long tail keywords are things like, um, it could be something like um, yoga, yoga outfit for the beach or um, um, pants for working out or you know sweatpants for working out. A longer phrase essentially is what, um, is what a long tail keyword is. And so even though those long, long keywords are super specific and you might think like who who's gonna how is that gonna help me it actually does help when it's combined with the short tail keywords because it has a narrower reach instead of that broad aperture that the short tail keywords has and with the narrow reach comes greater purchase intent so when people are searching short tail keywords they're just trying to get general information and um and research on a topic or a product or service but then once they start to get more information and get more specific, that with the specificity comes uh, the way that people are asking questions to Google and how they're searching. And there's these long phrases and sentences that make sense 
with, you know, maybe a blog post that you wrote about special pants that you can use on the beach or um, for yoga or for Pilates or whatever it might be. And that's just a silly example, but it gives you an idea. So now we're gonna start repurposing our content and we're gonna start with a marketing calendar. So a marketing calendar is a great way to get organized with um, your social media. And you can, you can do it, um, you know, some people do it, find that Excel works or Google Sheets works for them to create a marketing calendar for their content. But I really like the tools that are out there um, that make this a lot easier and that have um, that are connected to the different social media platforms so that you get a seamless um, planning of your posts and scheduling and then they go out automatically. And so I really like Buffer for um, smaller businesses and individuals. And then for... Um, what's for the, uh, sorry, what's the, what's the website for Buffer? I think it's just buffer.com. Buffer.com. Okay. Yeah, but I would double check it. I would double check it. Um, so yeah, so buffer's really great. Um, another one is called Predis A dot AI, and that's P as in Paul, R is in Ricky, E as in Edward, D is in dog, I is in Igloo, S is in Sam, and then dot AI, Predis dot AI. Um, I also put that link in an email to you, Kenny, so you can send it out to folks. Um, but Predis, it, it uses obviously the .ai, it uses artificial intelligence to help um, create posts for you. And then you can schedule them and put them on a visual calendar instead of a spreadsheet, which is a little bit harder to, to look at for, in my opinion. Um, so those are my two favorites uh, for individuals and small businesses, and even mid-sized businesses can can function well with these. Um, Buffer just released the ability to post um, Instagram Reels and Stories, so um, they were actually one of the first ones, um, along with Planoly. Planoly is another one. It's like uh, P L A N Plan, and then O L Y Planoly.com. Um, so Planoly uh, was one of the first ones that came out with uh, posting for Instagram because that was a big issue for a long time. Um, Instagram didn't have an API connection with some of these social media schedulers and planners. Um, and then the last one I really like is CoSchedule. And I think that one has a dash in it, but it's Co, co and then Schedule. Um, and it, I, I think it's CoSchedule.com or Co-Schedule.com. So um, Kenny can, can pop that in the chat as well. Uh, and then that one allows you to also plan all of your content on a calendar, um, schedule it, post it. And what's what why this is so great to have this type of a calendar is that with one of these platforms is that um, you get the analytics where you wouldn't get that using a spreadsheet. You'd have to like manually pull those analytics from Instagram or Facebook and TikTok and whatever platform you use. So um, that's what I really love about these platforms like Cretus, Buffer, CoSchedule, and Planoly is that you get the planning portion. You can visually see the grid and what you're working with. And then you can, um, you can build your team around that and assign team members. And then the best part is you get that measurable piece for ROI. So here's an example of um, like a spreadsheet calendar. This is just, um, this is actually a little bit dated. Um, I have a new calendar and, <clears throat> excuse me, I'll, um, I'll, I think I'll, I'll be able to gift that to you as well. I don't know if we have the, um, the updated one for 23 into 24. So I'll, I'll look and see if our team can get together a, um, a calendar for the rest of the year for social media holidays. But this is just a calendar that, um, a separate calendar from um, the buffers and co-schedules of the world. Um, and this just gives you like your social media holidays. So it'll have like all the, all these yellow hat has a list of all the different days. Like there's like um, National Bird Day, National Keto Diet Day, National Hamburger Day, Donut Day, all these different um, social media holidays that are kind of silly, but you can capitalize them <clears throat> on them based on your brand and what products and services you sell. So um, I like to make a calendar like this. It helps keep you organized. You can develop your brand voice. It saves your team time and stress and encourages the team to um, collaborate and post consistently. 
So now a question that I get asked a lot is how often do you post? Um, and so to keep up with all the content that's being put out there on a daily basis, how do you compete with your own value added content? I recommend that small businesses and medium sized businesses post one to four times a week at minimum. Larger companies obviously are able to post multiple times a day. Um, ideally, you know, more like the four, you know, leaning into the four or more posts per week is good. Um, if you can post once a day, that's you're ahead of the game. But if you can post at least one to four times a week, then um, you should be tracking with just about everyone else that's on social media, um, updating their content regularly. So now we're going to go into the repurpose exercise that I created. Um, First, you're going to, um, you can do this with me or you can um, take screenshots or you can use the slides when I send them uh, to, to do this exercise because it will, it will definitely help you. Um, so first, you're going to select a topic related to your business. Now, um, a niche that we, we specifically work with is beauty and hair. So I'm going to use that as an example, one of my hair clients as an example. So first, you're going to pick a topic related to your business. So that let's say that's going to be um, some summer protective protective hairstyles. Um, then you're going to pick five subtopics directly related to the main topic. So if if I have um, if my topic is um, summer protective hairstyles, protective hairstyles, and and even the summer part of it, th those are keywords, right? Um, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna um, pick five things, so five different hairstyles that are protective styles for the summer. Those are my five subtopics. So it should be related to the main topic. Then you're gonna make a list of 10 relevant keywords and they should be a combination of the short keywords and the longer tail keywords as well, those phrases. Um, to make the phrases and get an idea, you can go to Google Trends or um, you can go to uh, Google Alerts and sign up for alerts on different keywords that come up that are related to your business that come up in the media. And then you can capitalize on those moments in the media when maybe, um, you know, hair, different hairstyles are coming up in the summer. You go to Google Trends and Google Analytics, or not Google Analytics, um, uh, Google, um, oh, I just lost it. Trends or alert. Alerts, alerts. Um, you can go to alerts and, and pick up keywords there. You can also use, um, Google has a free keyword tool planner. So, and I think it's just like, you can just search Google for Google keyword planner and it'll come up. Um, and with the plant, with that, you can find what people are searching for. So think, you, what you wanna think about is for the long tail keywords at least, think about what question are people asking Google or Siri or Alexa? What questions are they asking to find the information that they need to find your product or service? So those are gonna be your short and long tail keywords. So you'll make a list of about 10 of those. If you have, um, if you have more, great, but I wouldn't really go over 30. 10 is appropriate for a blog post, which is what we're gonna create. So then you'll write three paragraphs on each of the five subtopics. So my, now my, um, my topic is summer protective hairstyles. I've got five hairstyles, 10 keywords. And for each of the five hairstyles, I'm gonna write like two to four sentences, maybe two, three paragraphs that describe each of those hairstyles, maybe how you do them, how you wear them, where you wear them, how, how is it beneficial for protecting your hair during the summer, et cetera, et cetera. So you'll write three paragraphs on each of the five subtopics and just keep tracking with me because we're going in the right direction. Um, then you're gonna write a short intro and the intro should be two to three sentences. This is for a blog post. So you've got your topic, your five subtopics, you've written a couple paragraphs of each of the, about each of the five subtopics. Now you're just gonna write a little introduction that precedes those, um, you know, those five subtopics. And what I like to do is I'll write maybe one or two sentences that describe the topic. And then the last sentence in my intro will be, in this blog post, you'll learn et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, about five protective hairstyles for the summer. So that's gonna be the intro. 
two sentences and then a third sentence that's like in this blog post you will learn. Um, then you're gonna write a short outro or conclusion. It's one to two sentences. Um, and that's just gonna summarize the blog post, the five topics that you wrote about or subtopics rather. It's gonna summarize that. And then you're gonna have a call to action at the end of that. So after those one or two sentences that summarize the blog post, which is normal blog posts, unlike maybe thesis papers or papers that you do in school don't have long intros and conclusions that are multiple paragraphs. They're really short, just a few sentences. So then um, after you're at the end of your outro, you'll have what's called a CTA or a call to action. And that's gonna be um, a direction that you, uh, that you give your customer to take an action. So for example, um, I might say, uh, so hope you liked these, this is the outro. Um, hope you enjoyed learning about these five protective hairstyles for summer. Um, we went over protective style one, two, three, and four, or five, and, um, and found all the benefits now, um, and then that will end there. And then you, you might say, now, um, it could be, there could be so many different calls to action. You could say, now click on this link to purchase our hair analysis kit to get your summer protective hairstyle information. Or it could, and that's kind of long, but it could be a sentence. Um, or you could say, um, click, um, this article also goes into depth about our hair analysis kit and the five protective hairstyles we talked about. And then that might go into a much longer blog post. Or you could say, um, click here to learn more or purchase whatever the product or service is. So that's a call to action is just telling people, you're telling people what to do, what you want them to do. Um, and sometimes it's gonna be promotional to you'll tell them to purchase or click here to buy now. And, but a lot of the times it's gonna be educational or informative. Um, so I use the 80-20 content rule where 80% of the content that we create is educational, value added, entertaining, engaging content. It's purely to give. And then the 20% of your content is promotional, which is the get part. So the promotional content can be, um, you know, you can ask for things like people to purchase a product or learn more about a product is kind of a softer call to action. And then um, that can follow into a sequence of getting the person to stay on your website longer so that they eventually do make that purchase. Okay, so now, We've got, um, we've got our topic, our five subtopics. We've got an intro and a conclusion as long as well as a CTA, a call to action. So essentially we've written a blog post. Um, that blog post probably, I would say with the amount of, of content that you're writing for five subtopics, that blog post is probably a good, at least 650 words. So you've got a good start. It might be more than that. I recommend between 900 to 1200 words for the best optimization that because Google likes longer form content. And the reason being is that it shows that you're an authority or expert on the topic because you can go on at length about this topic using the keywords that we that you uh, research and that your that your product or service is related to. Um, so Google rewards that with with putting you higher up in search, the more content that you have that's longer authoritative um, informational and has those keywords. And then, so now what you're going to do, and we have all that, that we have the blog post, you're just going to create a, a snappy headline, no more than six to 13 words. And now you have a truly have a blog post. This is an example here on the left. It shows um, our nine brand pillars. So a guide to digital marketing. So this was a very easy one for us to write because our title is the nine brand pillars. So guess how many paragraphs or how many subtopics we have? Nine, obviously. Each subtopic is a brand pillar. And then each brand pillar, there's a couple paragraphs about each one. Um, so now you've got your blog post. So that's one piece of content. Um, how long is a blogger's typical blog post? It's in that 500 to 1,000 words. More than 2,000 words is fewer, but um, this is as of like 2017. So, and again, and the, the, um, these dates might seem way, way long ago for, for most people, and yes, to a degree, but um, when we're collecting statistics and data, it, it does take time for it to catch up. So 
Um, I haven't found another another piece of content, and and I can research it more. Um, that shows more than two thousand words is super beneficial. I would say at that point you're going to be creating an ebook. So that's another piece of content you could create, an ebook or a white paper, um, which is just an informational paper, kind of more on a technical professional side um, rather than an ebook is a little bit more entertaining and informational. But you want your blog post to be between six, six, 500, 600 words to uh, uh, 1200. Okay, now we're gonna create a second piece of content with our blog post and that's called a lead magnet. So a lead magnet is, um, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a way to drive people to magnetize them through a, um, a digital product that they want. It could be a video, it could be um, a blog post, a gated blog post, it could be um, a webinar, it can be uh, ebook or a, a white paper as well or technical paper. Um, but the lead magnet, it's your freebie basically. And it's it's what you give away for free in exchange to get someone's email back. So it's, it's that thing that when you get to a website and they have the email pop up and say, hey, download our, you know, 50 different different topics to write blog posts on. And, and so you'll put your email in there and then you get that lead magnet, you get that freebie sent to your email and then you're on their email list. And email, that's another topic I could go on at length about is email marketing and how important that is to maintain your list and grow your list so that, because that's a way to directly reach customers. So now that you have your blog post, you also have your lead magnet. Um, so you're gonna, what you'll do is you're gonna deconstruct the blog post. So you'll take your headline and you'll take your five subtopics and create subheadings for each one. So just like when you write an academic paper, you have different sections, you can think of your sub subtopics as sections. So for the subtopic, um, for the first one, for our blog post on summer protective hairstyles, I might say, you know, um, give braids a chance or something like that as a, kind of like a catchy subheading. Um, it, get, it has a keyword in there, it has braids, um, it's short tail keyword, and it has, uh, and it's kind of like attention grabbing. So what you'll do is you'll take your, your headline and your subheading and start to create a, a checklist. So you'll get a little copy from each section of your, of your five subtopics that you wrote about and summarize each of those subheadings um, in one to two sentences. And then you just for the design part of it, all you have to do in Canva is just create your little template, put in little check mark boxes next to each checklist item, and then you have your lead magnet, your freebie. So, you, so for example, what that would look like is for the summer protective hairstyles, it would look like um, I would have a title, um, something catchy around. Uh, you know, get ready, for, get ready for the sum, summer with these, with these five protective hairstyles. Get ready for the summer with these five protective hairstyles is my header, the top part of my lead magnet. And then, um, and then I have a checklist of five different styles. And I wrote a sentence about each style. And that all came from the blog post. So you're repurposing your content here. Um, so the one checklist item might be, um, you know, give braids a chance, like I said, the catchy subheading that we used in the blog post. And then I'll put like one sentence, why braids are beneficial. So you, you're, you're talking about the features, but you're highlighting the benefits. Why are they beneficial for wearing braids? And why is it beneficial to wear braids in the summer to protect your hair? So that's your lead magnet, which you can create in Canva. So that's, now we've got two pieces of content that we've created. So now we're, we're over to email marketing. So you're going to create a newsletter or e-blast from your checklist. So what you'll do is go into, um, maybe some of you use uh, MailChimp or Constant Contact, or um, I use what's called Keep, which is more of a small business or enterprise and up to enterprise level um, product that does email automation and um, email marketing. And they also have a CRM built into it like HubSpot, like a, a customer relationship management database where you can manage your customers. Um, Keep is really the best one that I've found for the, for the value. 
Um, it's about a hundred dollars a month, but it includes all of those things. It includes the CRM, the a sales dashboard, um, the email automations, and the email newsletters and marketing. Um, and then your calendar, it's also connected to your calendar. So I like it as a small business owner um, because of what it does and then the, the cost, because uh, a lot of other CRMs are either a lot higher than that per month or you know up to $400 per month for some of them um, for more on the enterprise level um, or they're free or low cost, but they don't have the value. They don't have all the different benefits that that like Keep or HubSpot does, for example, those are kind of like my two go-tos. Constant Contact is another good one. Um, but like MailChimp and Zoho, even though they're free to a degree until you get to the paid version, um, you may decide when you get to that point, well, I don't wanna be on this platform anymore. So then you've got kind of an issue of, to, you have a migration issue. Um, and, and as well as, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles that some of these other ones do. So if you're looking for low cost or free, Zoho and um, HubSpot have two, they have, uh, they and MailChimp have free programs, um, but they do have paid ones. Eventually they want you to go into the paid um, or you could choose one that is paid hundred bucks a month and does everything for you, but it's a lot to learn. So it's kind of, you have to kind of weigh your, your choices. So from your checklist that you created for email marketing, you're going to go into your, uh, let's, let's just say constant contact. You're going to go into constant contact and click on um, campaigns and then click on emails. And then when you, when you click on emails, it's going to show you all these templates that you can use. So you don't have to do all the design work. It's already done for you. You just fill in the content. Um, so what you're going to do for your email newsletter, you're going to create a branded template. So you'll pick a template, maybe change the colors to match. So like if it was nifty, they might choose a template um, that's got like lots of places for image and text, a combination, or maybe even a video but they're gonna change the colors to the purple and orange that they specifically use for branding purposes and then put the logo in there. Um, then you're gonna take two to three of your checklist items and shape those sections into paragraphs, maybe two to four paragraphs within the template. Then what you're gonna do is link those, those uh, uh, maybe link a keyword from those paragraphs. It, uh, what, what that's called is anchor text. So for example, um, let's say I take two of those checklist items. I take braids and um, it's not a protective style, but it's just off the top of my head, ponytails um, or top knot, top knot. So braids and a top knot. So let's say I take those two, um, those are the two sub subheadings that we chose. We wrote a few paragraphs about them. We made those two checklist items. And what I'm gonna do is, is take some, some parts from the blog that we wrote, but then I'm going to also add a little bit more to it. And that's a section in the newsletter. Then what you're going to do is grab anchor text, which is all that is, is an anchor for your hyperlink that takes you to the blog. So in, um, in the first checklist item, um, let's say the top knot, I'm going to say paragraph, paragraph, paragraph about the top knot to, um, to, to read more about other or to read about um, four other protective hairstyles for summer, click here, and then you take them to your blog post. So now you're you're using the blog post, you're repurposing it in two different ways. You're taking apart, deconstructing it to make this email and checklist, but then you're also rerouting people to that blog post through the email. So then they go back to your site and, and the idea is to keep them on your site, the longer the better. Um, so those sections um, can be, like I said, two, three paragraphs, two to four paragraphs in your email. And then you're going to say something at the bottom, like a call to action with a link that goes to the blog post on your website. Now social media. So this is what everyone likes to hear about. Um, there's so many options for social media. You're going to go to your blog post and pull two excerpts from each of the five sections. So that, may, that will make you 10 social media posts. So you're gonna, again, you're gonna go to the blog post, pull two, maybe just two little sentences out of those five sections. Um, and, then, and then you're gonna have, you'll have 10 
different sentences, let's say, or, or subtopics. And those can be become social media posts, which you can spread out over two to three weeks, depending on how often you post. You can also pull quotes from your blog posts and make memes out of the quotes in Canva, um, which is a, a free design tool. Um, I like to, when I do quotes or memes, um, I usually do a 300 by 300 pixel um, template. And they have that, like they have in Canva, you can just say, you can make your design 300 by 300 and you could set it like that, or you can just choose Instagram post square and it'll make the square. So there now we've got four ways to repurpose our content. We've got the blog, the lead magnet, the checklist and social media. The fifth one, I don't know if you've guessed this yet, is advertising. So advertising is a paid strategy, but um, you can repurpose the content that you created in an ad and actually take your social media posts, maybe the two to three top posts that did really well online, and then do a little bit of copy editing and you have an ad that you can use with, with a call to action at the end, shop now, learn more, whatever it is, buy this kit, um, and it's ready to put into Facebook or Instagram ads manager. So again, you're gonna draw from those two to three top posts. I mean, check, you wanna check the analytics, like it, go into Buffer or go into um, your analytics in the actual platform and see like, okay, well, which of those 10 posts, posts uh, uh, perform the best? Take those two posts and make an ad or two, a couple different ads that you can test. And that's five ways to repurpose your content for social media. So um, hopefully you're able to follow along through this process. We have plenty of time for Q&A, um, but I would just want you to know repurposing content is so easy and you're able to do it in a way that's evergreen, which evergreen just means it can be used all throughout the year. So, um, so like the one, the topic that we chose is not as evergreen because it's about summer protective stuff, hairstyles, but um, other pieces of content could be evergreen, like um, I wrote a, I wrote a blog article on, um, the basics of SEO. So that's, that can be used and looked at and viewed all throughout the year. I might, I might even throw that in an email newsletter as a blog post as like a little excerpt two times a year, because people won't remember it six months from now, it gets buried. So you can repurpose it that way as well. Um, but you can recycle this content over and over in the coming years. I have a client that, um, they are, they provide meals like Meals on Wheels to senior citizens and they have multi-purpose centers where seniors can come in and do different activities like games and puzzles and um, exercise and creative writing and things like that. And um, they have, we've created a database of email newsletters within their constant contact. So every year we already know May is mental health month, June is Alzheimer's awareness, July is, you know, whatever it is, um, et cetera, et cetera. And so what I can do now is I can just search. And this is exactly what I did the other day for their Alzheimer's um, newsletter. I went in and I searched Alzheimer's 2022 because I label everything. And in constant contact, when you search that, any email that you wrote that has Alzheimer's in it will come up. It's like a little search engine. And I just went to that email, copied the email, I used some of the things that were in that email from a year ago because I thought they were kind of cool. Um, and then I just added an, an, another infographic and there I, boom, I had my email from something I did a year ago. Now you have to, obviously you can recycle it, and you, but you, you have to make changes and adjustments here and there because you don't want to literally post the same content every time um, or even like the same exact content, um, multiple, you know, duplicate content. You don't want that. Um, but you can go in and recycle and repurpose the content and just kind of like um, make those adjustments that make it a little bit different um, and fresh for the year. So like uh, for that one, the Alzheimer's one, what I did is I went to the Alzheimer's Association website and I found statistics on Alzheimer's for 2023, um, or uh, forecasts for 2023 compared to statistics from 2022. So it was kind of cool. We had that combination of the 2022 and 2023 
um, content in that email, but no one's going to know that we sent that 2022 content out at, at a time last year. Um, so you can also um, create more content like I talked about earlier, ebooks, white papers, podcasts, courses. I mean, those are already, that's four more ways to repurpose your content. You can um, also take testimonials and make social media posts out of those. You can um, take video testimonials and make posts out of those, blog posts or social media posts. Um, you can take a screenshot of um, you know, of maybe like a conversation that you had in your direct messages in Instagram and post something inspirational that maybe a customer talked to you about in a DM and you can post that and that's repurposing the content. Um, but there's, there's so many ways that you can do it. Um, these are just five and I, I would like to open it up for, um, Q and A for people that have questions about any of the topics that we went over today. Uh, and, I know it was a, it's a lot, it's a mouthful. So that's why I'm gonna send these slides so that you can go <laughs> step by step um, and follow each of the steps and actually create that content. Um, but I hope you enjoyed that informational yes. session. Yes, no, my gosh, you did phenomenal. I mean, it, there was so much uh, great information though, right? And so I tried, to, I tried to keep up with all the posts. I'm gonna have to go back. You said some websites and some resources that I had never heard of, you know, either. Um, and, and I was like excited looking up those sites that you, that you mentioned. So thank you for saying that, yeah. uh, just quick question. I got a couple, I'm going to give time for our folks, the folks that we do have. And again, a reminder for everybody, this is being recorded. It's going to be sent out. Um, uh, it's going to be used as a, as a way to help, uh, for those who weren't able to watch the video, they're going to get it. I know they're going to get a lot from this, uh, for sure. So this will be a great learning tool for students, uh, at Nicolet college, uh, and if the alumni who can take make use of this for sure. So, um, but uh, if you have a question and you're on the chat, please please leave your question there for Jessica and your email so she can email you out uh, as well. But uh, uh, Ray, actually, thank you, Ray. Ray has a question. <laughs> Ray Grant has a question. Uh, what are some ways to stay consistent posting on social media? Let's start there. He's got two, without being too much. That's, um, yeah, without, I, I will tell you, there's no such thing as too much anymore. There's content all over the place, all the time, 24 hours a day, 24 seven at your fingertips. So with social media and posting content, fortunately and unfortunately, more is more. So um, there's no way you can post too much. I would say the only thing, way that, um, that place that you could do too much would be email marketing. And that would be like no more, if you're like a big company, a big retail company, like um, let's say Ulta, for example, for beauty, I get an email every day from them. Um, I send it to a different box, but um, so it's not in my main, cluttering up my main inbox, but they can, they can afford to send an email every day because they have that clout of a big, being a, a large big box, you know, retail store um, and they have so many products, right? But small business owners for email marketing, at least, um, I think, you know, one to three emails a week is probably appropriate. Um, sometimes you can do a, an email a day and that and people will go for that. But I don't like to do the email um, newsletters too frequently because people will opt out at, or they'll mark it as spam and then you can get into trouble with that. So um, I would say everything except for email marketing to a degree, uh, the more you can post, the better. The best way to be consistent about it is to get on one of those platforms like the like Buffer, Post Schedule, Planoly, or Pretus. Um, and the reason being is that they have uh, you can batch your content. So you could say, okay, well, Sunday is my day off, or Monday is my content day. I'm going to create all the content, repurpose, and create all this repurposed content for for two weeks, or for a month, or for the week. And then you just batch it and you do all of it that Monday and it's done for the rest of the week or two weeks or month. I usually have our team get content ready for the month on a monthly basis for our clients. Um, and for us is that we batch all of it. So usually one that last week of the month, we create all the content for the following month. Um, and, and then we can repurpose it. And sometimes things change and we have to move things around and new holidays come up and we have to act quickly to you know, accommodate. 
for those. But uh, but yeah, there's there's probably no there's pretty much no such thing as too much in social media. Um, and then the but like use one of those social media planners, and I would just time block like block a couple hours out to work on that for the week. Um, so for a month to create a month of content for an agency like ours usually takes like four hours to create a month of social media content and then we take that that and we turn it into a blog post or we take the blog post and we turn it into the social media post so um it's just kind of it's recycled in that way but if you're thinking about in terms of consistency um what i had recommended was one to four times a week for a small business or personal brand um so if you're getting at least if you can just get one post a week you're going to be at least on, you know, on track and you'll be of your voice will be out there. But if you, the more you can do the better, because remember, it takes how many touch points before a customer makes a decision on your pr product or service, eight to 14 touch points. So we got to hit them, keep hitting them throughout the day, every, throughout the week um, with different types of messaging, that, like, like the different types of repurposing that we did, you know, not just social media, but blogs and emails and ads and all these different things. Wow. Yeah, no, that, you know, it's a real thing that eight to 14 times, it just, you know, law of averages come into play there, right? Like, it's kind of yeah. like <laughs> the more, the more people that see your content, if, and if it's the right content that they want to see, uh, this could really have great impact. You know, I want, I wanted to, uh, if, if you can, there's a slide you had with the 80 20 right oh with, yeah I, that was phenomenal and just you know 80 percent give 20 percent get i could imagine you know working with clients you probably get the opposite of how folks lean in when they think about you know <laughs> posting right it's uh possibly you know if you're if you're kind of green in this you know in, in the space i could see anyone you know it could be a natural thing to kind of lean in with what they want to get they're trying to sell something you know, et cetera, you know, how to say a little bit more about that concept because, and, and maybe, you know, some, some things you might've seen in your experience, uh, you know, and, you know, adapting this and some successes or, uh, you know, challenges you might've seen, like, how did you come up with this conclusion and, and from the work that you do and the clients you work with, um, what's some of the takeaways that you've had? Yeah, that's a great, great point. Um, so I think actually, it, I don't think it's on one of the slides. I think I just threw that in there. Um, there was a lot of, when I do these presentations, I use, I always need slides to guide me because I do go off on tangents, but it's because they're so related and it's important information. Um, and obviously I won't go into like a full presentation of another topic, but um, you get some of these other little bites. So the 80-20 rule, um, comes into play with with all your content and anything that you deliver in your business because you if you the more you give the more you will get so even if even though you're only posting 20 percent promotional content um and that's organic promotional content so social media posts blog posts email marketing for example not ads um so the organic content if you just post 20 percent promotional you don't know what that 20% is going to do after people have read, you know, and five emails of yours and two blog posts and saw social media and they weren't being sold to. So the more you give, the more you receive. And if you're trying to sell hard to, you know, uh, do a hard sell to people, it really turns people off because, because our, our consumers per, purchase purchasing behavior is different than it was. 20 years ago, 10 years ago, even five years ago, people don't want to be sold to in that way. They want to get the information and then be able to make their own decision. So it's really important to educate with that 80% um, of, of educational, entertaining, value added content. That's so good. No, thank you. And I know we have a little bit more time. Uh, and want to give folks that you know may have a question or two before we before we close out uh, to ask Jessica. But Jessica, what, what what brought you into this industry? Like, how did you uh, discover? You? I've seen a couple of your presentations. I've been I've been impressed from uh, from day one, and uh, oh, I think you. you know one of your superpowers is taking something that could be very complex and overwhelming 
and presenting it in a way that is, uh, you know, uh, very chewable for the audience. Uh, you find a way to put it in layman's terms for people. So, but what what was one of the inspirations as to why you uh, got into this industry and what inspired you? Oh, thank you for asking that. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's let's just get real here. <laughs> I fell into marketing. I did not go to school for marketing. And most people are very surprised when they hear that because of the knowledge and experience that I bring to the table. But um, I totally taught myself and I learned through, I took, I've taken uh, continuing education courses, certification programs. So I do have, you know, that type of, I guess if you're looking for like the stamp of approval, I have a lot of those stamps, but I didn't go to school for marketing. And, and really was um, what happened is I, I got recruited to, um, right after college, I got recruited to a tutoring center. Um, and as a sales manager, sales and marketing manager, and that's where I first learned about marketing. I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know anything about sales, but I was really good at it for whatever reason. Um, I studied English and creative writing in, in college. And, but, uh, but even though that's not, um, as technical as like mar something like marketing or um, business, for example, it's uh, it's given me that that creative edge, having come from a, ba a creativity background and a writing background. Um, now it's like the best time to be a content creator right now because content is people want it, they want the information, they're searching for the information. And, and it can totally help your business. Um, so yeah, so I got, so that was the first job that I took right out of college. And um, and then I just kept kind of following the trail and I worked for advertising agencies. So what we call working um, at, you know, at an agency versus in-house. In-house is when you're not working at an agency, you're working for a corporation and you're in their marketing department. So I've done both. I've worked for ad agencies and I've worked in-house for um, different companies. Um, and then what I ended up doing is I started to see some similarities in the specialization that I was getting into or the niches. Um, so I started doing uh, working with a lot of companies that did either fashion, beauty, or, or um, lifestyle. So those are, those are kind of the areas that I, that's why I thought of the hair topic because it's so pertinent and so top of mind. Those are the type of clients that I have. So um, yeah, so then I got into that niche and then that was 20 years ago when I started my marketing journey and it's, it's been a long and bumpy ride. Uh, and then in 2016, I actually, um, I lost everything and became homeless. And my son and I um, lived in a shelter and I had, at the time, I acquired three different jobs. They were all, they were all online but they were like data entry, super, you know, entry level, not what I was used to doing. I was used to performing at a very high level and I burnt out. And actually that's what I wrote my newsletter about was, is about burnout. Um, this last newsletter that I sent today um, for the week. But um, I, I realized, okay, I can go back to corporate or I could take off on my own. And I ended up taking off on my own to kind of make my own schedule and my own rules, so to speak. Um, and I got into a, a business micro enterprise program through Pepperdine University that the shelter um, had a connection with. It was a free program. They taught me about business and, and it's kind of like a mini MBA. And um, I wrote a business plan and I started executing that. And then as I got more clients, you know, one by one, I started to eliminate the, the, the three different jobs one by one. So, um, and then we just grew and became, went from like me being a freelance writer, editor, marketer to, um, you know, a company now that we have, um, we have a whole uh, publishing division of our company. We have a division where I just do speaking and different engagements. So now we've got, and we've got a team of, um, oh, I call them our core four. So our core four are the main ones that work on our team. And then I have a couple other contractors that are, um, that do one-off projects. But now, you know, we've just, I just took, took the ball and ran with it, uh, essentially after, you know, in 2016. 
It's remarkable. I feel like the world needs to hear your story. Um, I think, you know, I'm agreeing with Ray, who has an awesome story himself. He's a master storyteller. I hope he emails you. Oh, uh, I hope but, so. Uh, <laughs> um, but remarkable. And uh, I know we're running out of time. Always want to give folks uh, one last chance. It's uh, uh, but uh, uh, but last question for me, unless someone else has a question, uh, would be in reference to all the stuff we're seeing with AI. Um, uh, we're, yes. we're seeing so much with AI right now. And, uh, you know, we started this six part series with ChatGBT and other AI tools that small business owners can use. So if you're on this call or if you're seeing this video and you want to know like how to get that, uh, you could definitely email us and you'll get a follow up email for sure. If you've registered for any of these, we're going to email out all of those, uh, all of them. Uh, but uh, uh, but what's what's been that impact and what have you noticed uh, in terms of content generation? Uh, you know, there's some folks that have a they're they're passionate and excited about it, but I've also seen you know anxiety and fear around it for those who generate content. You know, now you have this robot. You know, if you plug plug the prompt right, you know, can generate that content for you. So, what what say you and and how have, how have you seen it impact some of the work that you're doing? It's definitely impacted uh, being a content marketer in, in a lot of ways, um, but I choose to embrace it because what the human experience, at least right now, AI is a fantastic tool. I love Chappy, chat GPT. I love jasper.ai. I use them both. Um, I've actually been using AI for about five years, uh, different tools that that exist in the marketing world um, that existed before chat GPT, but now they're just more evolved. Um, but I embrace it because it's a tool. I use it as a tool in my toolbox. And any of the ways that we talked about repurposing content today, you can do it way faster with ch chat, G chat GPT. So I should have mentioned that. Um, but I think what's what's good about AI is that it's making our jobs easier, faster, more efficient to keep up with the volume of content that is kind of required of businesses at this point. It's like, how do you generate five blog posts a week? That's impossible for a small business owner. Um, but for if you have ChatGPT, you can easily do that. However, with ChatGPT, um, it only knows information up to 2021, I believe. I think there's even a new version that is like a little further along than that. But um, so there's that. So it's not it's not going to be day of current. Um, so that's one thing. The other thing is it requires editing because it's not it doesn't it doesn't know certain nuances of, of human language when you're trying to communicate whatever your message is. So for example, like I earlier today, I was, I just, I was, had, a, had a block and I was trying to write for a website and I, I wrote, you know, the paragraph, the description that I was writing, but it sounded so dull to me. So I popped it into chat GPT and I just said, rewrite this with a more, with a, in an exciting and um, upbeat tone or whatever I put in it. And it rewrote it. And, but it was, it was like, over the top it was everything was extraordinary everything was like revolutionary and so it was you know it requires that human um decision making and and human touch that i think is missing still um that may change in the future i really don't know but um but right now i think it's a good tool to use but yeah it does require editing and sometimes fact checking because uh, you know, with the plagiarism was a big issue that came up when it first came out. Is you know how do how do we protect against plagiarism? And so, <clears throat> and I thought of that when I started using um, Jasper was a tool I started using a few years ago, um, which I have a link. I'll send that link as well to you, um, Kenny, and, and some of these other links. Um, Jasper is another writing tool, but yeah. um, their whole thing in the beginning was like we do not, our bots do not plagiarize, but you still need to check them as a human and make sure that the context is correct, right? Yeah, no, this is all amazing. I'm, I'm blown away by all of it. And I feel like uh, as entrepreneurs, small business owners, you've got to at least have a knowledge of, some, of a lot of these things that 
are juggling. You mentioned some really great ones. Jasper's another one, guys. If you haven't heard of Jasper before, AI, I haven't used that one, but I feel like I've come across it as one of the top AI, um, you know, uh, programs to use. So, uh, well, without further ado, I just want to say thank you again, Jessica. It's been amazing to uh, have you uh, with us today. We really appreciate all your wisdom and knowledge and uh, everything. And and you did mention um, a free gift. So how can how can they get the free gift? Uh, from you, and I guess that's they have to give you your e their email. <laughs> yeah, if you, yeah. If you provide your email, um, I'm happy to send that. There's a blogging, um, an SEO ebook that I have, and then that content calendar with all the social media holidays, and then the slides. So um, I'll go back to that screen that has my email address on it. Perfect. Yep. They can email you directly. Perfect. Um, awesome. So if you're here live with us, or if you uh, well, I guess you get the, they can email you at any time, whether they, they hear it live or whether they see the video, but I think the free gift is for those who showed up possibly, yes. but I'll let Jessica decide how she distributes the free gift. But uh, if you email her, for those that are here, uh, you know, it's, this is your lucky day for sure. But Jessica, thank you so much. This has been amazing as always. Um, and I can't wait to see how your business evolves. And, uh, and I'm looking forward to the next time, you know, I, I hear another one of your workshops. Uh, I know, you. you know, I know people in the, in the area, LA area who know you use, use all of your services or, or uh, your training services. So thank you. Thank you again. We really appreciate you being with us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate right. you. Kidding. Thanks all everyone. Right. Thanks everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, look out for those follow-up emails and have a phenomenal day. Thank you.